flooding remains a big concern in Seminole County, where river levels started to go down after Hurricane Ian. Yeah, it was just getting to a good spot. News 6's Eric Von Anken joins us now live from there. The pictures you've been showing all night and throughout this morning, Eric, are pretty crazy. Yeah, hey, good morning, Justin Bridget. So we're in the middle of it for sure now. Uh, like Eric Sandoval was just saying, definitely the strongest and most intense it has been all night since we first started seeing you from this location right around eight nine o'clock last night so this is the river walk here that heads to downtown sanford i'm going to try and keep my back to the river and this of course is lake monroe which hasn't come up a whole lot it's not like the level of the lake has come up but you know what has changed is the waves are slamming this seawall a whole lot harder than they have been since this started. So now what's happening is obviously the wind blowing the waves in and, and Lake Monroe being the largest lake, uh, at least across, of the three lakes here in Seminole County and Brevard County that the St. John's feeds into and dumps into, Lake Jessup, of course, and Lake Harney, but Lake Monroe being the biggest here in downtown Sanford, plenty of time for the wind to grab these waves and, as I said, smack them into the seawall where I'm standing. But what I was trying to say is what's different is the wind now. So as these, as these waves hit the seawall, the wind is lifting them up I'm going to get out of this a little bit and taking it out over the street so this is Seminole Boulevard and again this is not flood water it's just I don't know wind water and waves washing up now over the seawall as let me, Jeff I'm gonna try and head back over here so Jeff, if you can show over the railing, again, you know, the height of the, of the lake is still maybe four feet down from the top. If it were higher, this whole walkway here, the river walk and the street, Seminole Boulevard, would be totally underwater. But it's not. Like I said, it's the waves hitting the seawall and washing into the street. So remember we talked about junk, a whole bunch of stuff flying around in the air. This stuff is just what's washing up from the lake. So remember a few hours ago there was this uh, puddle of um, vegetation, I guess you could call it, that had ended up in the lake. Now, with each wave that hits the seawall and brings the water over, it's ending up here out in the street. And it's not just vegetation, I mean, you know, another reason to stay out of the flood floodwaters, you, you don't know what's in it. You got a, looks like a buoy or a ball. I don't know, maybe a buoy from, uh, to mark one of the anchor points from some of the boats that are tied up. We've got a lot of questions about people's boats. They've wondered, how are boats faring if you got them tied up in the Sanford Marina? I, I don't have an answer for you right now, but what I can tell you is earlier on in the, in the night when we checked out the marina, which is east of where I am. So those are the lights in the distance. That's downtown Sanford and where the marina is, of course. There's a really good seawall that seems to be protecting a lot of those boats. So even as it was starting to get rough out here, they weren't even bobbing around. We know uh, people were out here the last few days tying them down to make sure that anything they could do to keep them from banging into the docks and possibly each other and, of course, uh, breaking loose, they did. So if you got a boat here, I'm hopeful that that seawall over by the marina is protecting it. But where we are, as you see, no protection. And, and it's not... Oh, there's a there's a big log out there floating. Again, it's it's now a combination of the wind 
and the waves here. The wind picking up these waves. We're not seeing anybody out on the roadway here. The only, the only vehicle that has passed by in the last hour has been a Seminole County Sheriff's Office vehicle. We heard Sheriff Dennis Lima say yesterday very clearly, we're not putting a curfew into place, but we really, really trust that you're not going to be out driving in this. And the funny thing is, uh, you know, 7, 8, 9, even 10, even midnight, there were cars. There were a lot of people looking. Now I think people realize it's gotten to the point. That's why we're out here in a, in a fairly controlled spot. <laughs> You know, I, I know it looks dramatic with the waves. I can't get away from them. But again, this is just wind, wind washing these waves over to us. But the sheriff saying it's really not a great idea to start driving around. And, and this is a lot of the reason why, like I said, this stuff that has washed up. And there's all kinds of stuff coming out of the water, flying through the air. There's a shoe right, right there floating in front of me. We know that there's reports. Uh, not here in Seminole County, but around Central Florida. I want to say this was in Volusia County, where street lights are starting to come down. Street lights are uh, starting to dangle. Um, things that y you wouldn't expect, because if you're driving along, you know you're used to everything being fairly normal. Uh, say that again, guys. You're trying to talk to me. Okay. So. Back, back to the point of the curfew. The sheriff said there will be no official curfew, but he doesn't expect people to be on the roads. There are no one on the roads right now. He has two shelters open here in Seminole County. At this point, it's probably too late to get to a shelter. Um, but, but the reason for that as well is because as this water starts to come up here along the St. John's, and eventually it will, once, once the rain starts to run off, the sheriff was very concerned about people not being able to get out of their houses and getting help to those houses. They have high water vehicles on standby, but Bridget Justin, it, we don't know how, how high the St. John's is going to get, how high this lake is going to get, because it takes days, typically, for the water to filter into the river and the lakes before we finally see what we're dealing with out here. Absolutely. Uh, fascinating uh, live report there from Eric Von Aiken live along the Sanford Riverwalk. And it looked more like the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, hit those, those waves just rip against and over that seawall there. And, and he made a good point. He said, you know, that the sheriff was basically just in imploring people not to go out. And I think if you just watch Eric's oh, live yeah. hit right there, you're not going to want to go and out. All and all that this. water is being pushed into the mm -hmm. downtown area. It's pushing up against the river. And that, that flood warning area extends from DeBerry all the way down to Lake Jessup. So that water has mm -hmm. to go somewhere, and that's why they don't want people out in it.